Tonight, we invite you to be part and parcel of this conversation. And of course, you can send in your views, comment, and questions regarding today's, um, you know, uh, topic of discussion, where we take a look at matters, you know, politics that concerns you, the common citizen. And of course, to help me unpack this a very, you know, very interesting, um, you know, state of the nation, of course, is Kennedy Ondiek, that is UDS South Nyanza coordinator and governance expert. Uh, Asante Sana for making time. All right, so tonight, or rather today, we woke up to the news that um, Haitian Prime Minister Ariel um, Henry has resigned. And of course, uh, you know, recently he was in the country uh, trying to some sort of, um, you know, uh, make a deal work between Kenya and Haiti so that uh, the national, the Kenya uh, national forces could be sent to Haiti to keep the peace mission. And of course, now with the resignation of uh, the prime minister now, this, you know, still beg the big question. Is the mission still on? And uh, what is the state of Haiti? Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, my brother. Number one, I have to, first of all, say that uh, as a country, we have an international duty. Mm -hmm. And uh, when such duty calls, uh, our country has got a, a, an opportunity mm -hmm. to help in uh, stabilizing a particular state uh, because this is, uh, this is what is required of international uh, standards mm -hmm. and uh, Kenya having accepted to be a donor of uh, security forces to Haiti uh, it is only noble that we first look into the content of this particular agreement because this is um, a bilateral agreement when you look at international law uh, and also international security law and any other regulations uh, uh, within that particular spheres I require that when a country is having ability to assist in controlling or otherwise uh, keeping peace in another state, it has to be done by the United Nations. And you know, this one is actually a duty which is accorded by the international uh, body, that is the United Nations Security Council. Mm -hmm. And it is also provided under bilateral agreement. A state and a state can have a bilateral agreement which allows them mm -hmm. to do or particular to, to, to carry out a particular activity. Mm -hmm. And so Kenya, uh, under President William Bruto, having uh, met uh, in a consensus, uh, what is called meeting of the minds, mm -hmm. which in law we call consensus ad item, mm -hmm. to have that particular agreement. Okay. Yeah, it becomes an agreement where there's an offer mm -hmm. and there's an acceptance. You know, uh, when you look at the law of contract, mm -hmm. there may be individual contract whereby one person uh, agrees with another person where that one person gives an offer and the other person gives an acceptance mm -hmm. based on a particular consideration. Right. Uh, one, Haiti had a need for police officers, mm -hmm. but Kenya has the force. Mm -hmm. Therefore, uh, there was an offer by mm -hmm. Haiti government which was accepted by Kenyan government based on a consideration which they gave, which is 600 million. Uh, dollars, and you know that is what Kenya was expecting mm -hmm. to receive. And according to the minister uh, Kindiki, the position that the government of Kenya took is that we will release our forces only upon receipt mm -hmm. of this particular amount, which actually is not even coming from Haiti government. It's mm -hmm. supposed to be coming from the international, uh, from the United Nations mm -hmm. uh, Security Council. So okay. it is there was some financial gain that the country would get mm -hmm. by deploying our forces into Haiti. And then, apart from that pecuniary uh, consideration, mm -hmm. we would also have what we call international duty that we shall have played. Kenya has donated or has otherwise sent forces, uh, whether in, in form of KDF or in form of local police, uh, they've always been deployed in different countries. Okay. The only thing that the government of William Ruto is, has, 
is operating on open door policy. So you realize that Kenyans are aware that we are supposed to deploy police in this particular country. Uh, unlike the past regimes where uh, they were just secrets of the state and we just hear that our forces are being deployed to this particular country, uh, being sent to this particular country without even Kenyans knowing but, uh, what is actually going, but uh, going Dickie, on. There, uh, there is a procedure of uh, you know, sending our forces to a foreign country, which and was all of them followed. must be actually must be approved by the National Security Council because that is under the law. Uh, the, sec the National Security Council first could not be bypassed even when this contract was being signed, mm -hmm. yeah. And when the court pronounced itself, mm -hmm. it is also supposed to be taken to Parliament mm -hmm. for parliamentary approval, mm -hmm. and uh, the government uh, under the presidency also has got a duty to generate such uh, contracts. And when we have our legal uh, of people mm -hmm. interrogating that particular contract, and then the group that is supposed to have it executed mm -hmm. is actually the Ministry of uh, Interior, because this one is under police. Right. So the ministry has updated the country, and uh, they have notified the country that we are going to co carry out an international duty of deploying our police officer to help Haiti as one of uh, the members of the international family. Okay. So Kenya mm -hmm. has ability uh, because we have the forces. The only challenge is that there were certain legal hurdles which were there, which have actually been addressed, and uh, I'm sure parliament is going to have approval given okay. to the president. Now, the only challenge uh -huh. which I think Kenyans are being treated to is uh, the resignation of uh, the prime minister. All I right. can tell you that uh, in a bilateral agreement, mm -hmm. it is not about an individual. Mm -hmm. Kenya as a state and Haiti as a state right. under middlemanship or under uh, uh, middleman, let me say middlemanship of the international community mm -hmm. can sit and agree and when there is a bilateral agreement, it doesn't matter who is the head of state. The, the thing I can tell you is that the only thing that can happen mm -hmm. is that uh, uh, if the state of anarchy in Haiti is resolved mm -hmm. before our forces are deployed, then there may be no need again now to deploy them. But right. as things stand, uh, the Haiti anarchy is at the peak and the agreement that Kenya as a state mm -hmm. has with Haiti was to the effect that they're supposed to provide forces, which is actually, so, which has, these forces are supposed to ensure that there's peace in Haiti and there's no peace yet in Haiti. Kenya as a country can still respect mm -hmm. her part of the gain of deploying the forces. Mm -hmm. And the persons who are to pay are still having obligations lying upon them to pay. If Kenya fails, to deploy the forces as per the agreement, mm -hmm. because that was a state versus state, mm -hmm. Kenya will have uh, breached the contract. Mm -hmm. And if you breach such contract, you have a duty that lie upon you. So when you immediately you sign a contract, there's a duty. So Kenya will still have a duty and responsibility of deploying mm -hmm. the forces, irrespective of whether okay. the president, the prime minister has resigned, because the prime minister only signed the contract as a representative of the state All right. and not and, as the state itself. And hold on there. The prime minister signed the contract as yes. a representative of, of the, the state. state. Yes. But as we speak right now, it seems like there is no any state in Haiti. So the question is, who are you deploying the forces to? There can never be there can never be lack of state. Mm -hmm. What can only be is lack of leadership. Who is leading? Yes. So lack of leadership does not mean lack of a state. Kenya is a state. And the state has got different organs. Okay. If there is no prime minister in Haiti, it doesn't okay. mean that judiciary is not working in Haiti. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean that uh, a parliament of Haiti is not working. Mm -hmm. It is only the prime minister who has resigned. Mm -hmm. All arms of government in Haiti have not resigned. Number two, um, the state is actually the structure of government. Are you telling me that uh, all offices, everybody has left? Because if you come to Kenya, we have the state and we have the head. If the president resigns, doesn't mean that we don't have a state. If our president uh, leaves office by any means, because uh, the one of the prime minister of Haiti has left uh, the office through resignation, but any head of state can exit office through different means. Our constitution does provide the process through a person can cease to be a head of state. So 
That one does not mean that there's no state. The only thing that is not there is the head of state. But now the state still exists and the uh, international obligations that lie upon that state exist. Even Somalia has got challenges here, but it's still a state. Mm -hmm. there's, uh, there's some level of uh, statemanship and uh, what is going on there. So Haiti is, is in existence. There's a country, there's a state. Because, you know, if I take you to what is a state, is the all powers that belong to the people has been coalesced into one great power for, called the state. So the governance mm -hmm. system and the mm -hmm. governance structure mm -hmm. and the governance, the, the people in charge of governance may change. The governance system may change. The government structure may change, but mm -hmm. this, the country does not change and the state cannot change. So we have a state of Kenya. We cannot change. It's only the governance system of our state can change, like mm -hmm. we changed our governance system when we promulgated the constitution in 2010. We have we changed the, go, the governance system. All right. But we did not change the state. Kenya remains the same. Hold on for a minute. The reason why I'm telling you that um, you know, our forces will be deployed to who? Because according to the agreement, it was, you know, head of state versus a reciprocal country or rather reciprocal head of state. For example, in this case, we had Haitian prime minister who came to Kenya. And that is, that is according to the legal basis, according to the, you know, the interpretation of the high court. So that, that area is covered. But now that, you know, the prime minister is out of picture. And as we speak currently, we don't have any functioning uh, government in Haiti now. When you deploy Kenyan uh, police forces to Haiti, the question is they're going, uh, you know, as in the invite of who? Uh, let, let me tell you, I think we need to reevaluate our international responsibility as mm -hmm. a country. And also we need to look at uh, international agreements, which are called bilateral agreements. Mm -hmm. A bilateral agreement is an agreement that mm -hmm. exists <laughs> or is put or is made to exist between two countries or more. Mm -hmm. We can have a bilateral agreement or trilateral, where mm -hmm. we can even tetralateral, where we can have different countries getting into different uh, understanding in terms of uh, uh, contract or mm -hmm. contractual responsibility to mm -hmm. do something. So you find that Haiti is a country and is a government, yes. unless it has been removed from the world map. Yeah, it's a as long as the country of Haiti exists, mm -hmm. the state of Haiti exists, it is only the, pre the prime minister who has resigned. Mm -hmm. And we have not been told that he has resigned with the whole of his government. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we have, when, uh, when, um, when uh, Amin Dada resigns, resigned from Uganda, Uganda did not cease to exist. Mm -hmm. Uganda existed and proceeded with duties that were there. Even if William Ruto today resigns as the president, does not mean that the state ceases to operate because there are the arms of government which are operating, including even the executive, will still operate unless uh, uh, it is uh, uh, a disaster. And even if there is a disaster where the whole executive is not there, there mm -hmm. must be a, 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 a designated survivor. There must be a survivor who runs the government as we wait in case of such a serious disaster where the whole the whole government uh, structure is uh, is destroyed maybe in something uh, <clears throat> therefore mm -hmm. haiti is a state mm -hmm. the prime minister is head of state there will be an immediate head of state don't think that even if it's a military head mm -hmm. it will be a head of state mm -hmm. yeah and in fact in the why, why because he has resigned do you think that there will be no one to take charge mm -hmm. power abhors <coughs> vacuum and you are going to ensure that uh, you're going to see that there's someone in charge so the person who is going to come next mm -hmm. is the one who will determine mm -hmm. whether the agreement remains or not because he can also come for a bilateral amendment of that particular contract that's mm -hmm. all he can do mm -hmm. he can rescind the contract because mm -hmm. when a contract has been signed mm -hmm. you are able to perform it or rescind it mm -hmm. when you rescind a contract mm -hmm. it means that you are getting away or you are setting aside that contract therefore mm -hmm. the terms in that contract must mm -hmm. be rescinded all by right. the new prime minister okay. in case they are not willing to proceed with this right. particular contract or Mm -hmm. Another thing, mm -hmm. international community mm -hmm. that facilitated that particular contract may still proceed okay. as a prefect to so, ensure that it is performed. Fair enough. Hold on uh, that thought. Of course, you are taking a very short break. When you come back, the, uh, the conversation still continues. See you in a while. 
Right, the conversation still continues, and of course, um, we are talking about matters politics, economy, of course, governance, and everything in between. And of course, in this line, I want us to switch discussion now to, you know, one of the very pressing issues that um, touches on a lot of Kenyans, the political leadership, and of course, you the common citizen. I'm talking about the NADCO report uh, divide that has some sort of uh, evoked some kind of reaction from leaders, Kenyans, and of course this is a very hot uh, conversation that comes at this particular time and I want to get um, your insight on this, uh, you know, Mr. Ndeki. When you look at um, the purpose for this NADCO report, there were, you know, very fundamental issues that were raised that should be addressed. One of them was the cost of living. The reason why, according to many Kenyans who actually took to the street to protest, one of the reasons was the high cost of living, the high taxation, uh, everything in between regarding to this. Now, the report is out. President William Root and, of course, uh, Azimio party leader, that is Raila Odinga, received this um, particular report. And there is some general feeling that, um, you know, the report did not live up to the expectation of many Kenyans. Do you feel maybe the report actually, you know, some Kenyans might have maybe been duped by this, uh, the same, same report because, um, you know, the key agenda, the high cost of living, uh, there might be some changes, but you and I will agree that not really much has changed. Yeah, uh, my brother, I think, uh we need to first of all start from where the NADCO began. Mm -hmm. you know, when uh, we conducted our elections in 2022, uh, Kenyans actually went out to vote. Mm -hmm. And uh, the result of a vote is supposed to be uh, a declaration of a result. Mm -hmm. And uh, the results were declared from the MCA up to the presidency. Mm -hmm. uh, the other positions, Mm -hmm. People agreed. They, a few people went to court, uh, high court uh, made determination, mm -hmm. and even at the national level, as the mayor leadership went to the Supreme Court, upon which the Supreme Court did pronounce itself to the extent that the election was fair and that William Ruto won fairly and squarely with the margin as was declared by IBC. And therefore, mm -hmm. Kenyans uh, knew that they went and made a determination. The only mm -hmm. thing is that, and I need to take you through the history lane, when we had Kibaki going for his second term against Rail Odinga, mm -hmm. uh, you know what happened in 2007, leading to post-election violence. Mm -hmm. And then when uh, Uhuru Kenyatta came in 2013, you know what happened after the election of 2013, where Uhuru Kenyatta was elected for the first time. Mm -hmm. And when Uhuru Kenyatta went for the second election, mm -hmm. uh, you know what happened, the same individual, who went again to the courts. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, that time Supreme Court did what has never been done in this uh, Kenyan history for the first time, mm -hmm. uh, nullified the presidential election. At the same time, the same individual refused to go back for election. And then when William Ruto now came in, you realize mm -hmm. that uh, after 2007, there was, a, there was what was called a court, national court. Mm -hmm. This national accord was in a way to bring the two parties together, mm -hmm. and that one led to the Sumkate government. All right. When we had the 20, uh, 13, uh, 2017, it went and brought in handshake, which brought Raila back into government. Mm -hmm. And then when uh, we went to 2022, uh, mm -hmm. again now with a different person, Again, it's William Ruto. The same individual still f claims that he has, uh, his election has been stolen, leading to another discussion. Mm -hmm. So I can only look at where do our systems stand? And that is now uh, what I am going to debate here, what mm -hmm. I'm going to discuss here. Because when you went to 2007, we had a court, uh, that was the National Accord Bill, mm -hmm. which was taken to Parliament, which was approved, leading to the Nusumkate government. In 2017, there was no accord. It was a sudden thing with a handshake, mm -hmm. which we just woke up to, and everyone at, at around 10 or 11 in the morning, we saw mm -hmm. the two shaking hands at Nya uh, Arambe, was it Nya House or Arambe House? Something there. And then, uh, now, it has come into, uh, and then suddenly after that, there was something to do with BBI. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the handshake brought in BBI, right. which also attempted to amend the constitution, mm -hmm. which failed. All right. And then, when you check again, uh, this one now came into National uh, Dialogue Committee. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And uh, it is the same string of individual. Even if you look at the code, the -hmm. national code, Kalonzo Musioka was somewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, Raila Dinga was somewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, all these people, some were representing William uh, Mwaiki Bak and some were representing Raila Dinga. And in the handshake, there was no such meeting, but there was uh, there was um, there was BBI, which was also like bringing all the sides, mm-hmm. and now they have gone to Nadiko. Mm-hmm. Nadiko basically is a tool that was trying to be used by Azimio leadership, and I want to be very frank with this. Mm-hmm. It was tri- a tool which was going to be used by Azimio leadership so that they can pin the government down, whereby they lost election, but they don't want to accept. Then they tell Kenyans that the cost of living is very high. Okay. Yet. I wish I could execute this point properly. Uh, yet, on 22nd mm-hmm. of August, mm-hmm. 2020, uh, 27th of July, mm-hmm. 2022, when Raila Odinga was flagged by Martha Karua, the deputy, he explained that the cost of living question is something that is global, mm-hmm. and they cannot solve it. Mm-hmm. And, it is, and then they talked about cost of fuel, which they said is also determined by the international parameters. Mm-hmm. So they could not. I don't know what miracle they expected to happen when William Ruto took out of office. Yes, while William Ruto was campaigning, he also said he will deal with these situations. And maybe they didn't understand the formula William Ruto wanted to use. Now, we came in when the dollar was 100 and something. Mm -hmm. Today, the dollar is exchanging at 139. William Ruto is doing his work. Mm -hmm. Uh, We we came in when the cost of unga was 100 and something, 200 and something shillings. Mm -hmm. Today, unga is 140. Okay. The two kgs. So you realize that there's a drastic change in many things. And I'm telling you, it's not yet 13th. When is that? Today is 12th. Mm-hmm. I'm sure APRA is supposed to announce a different uh, price of fuel by 13th tomorrow or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. You are going to realize that and it, confirm it with me tomorrow. Okay. Cost of fuel must go down because cost of dollar has terribly gone down. Mm-hmm. And even if you check at cost of electricity, mm-hmm. uh, it has been affected because of a few things, but it's going down uh-huh. in the next few days because of uh, this reduction in the in, in dollar. So the, the amount of dollar. So because the Kenyan currency is stabilizing. So Nadiko report was actually supposed to look at this thing called cost of living because that's why Kenyans went on the streets. Mm-hmm. But actually it turns out that people went on the streets for leaders to create positions for themselves because mm-hmm. if you look at the report, mm-hmm. number one is not cost of living, it's reorganization, restructuring of IBC. Mm-hmm. Number two is not cost of living, it is delineation and review of boundaries. Mm-hmm. Number three is not cost of living, it's something else. Then number four, cost of living comes under one subheading, Article 43 and other related matters. Look at where they have brought why Kenyans went on the street with souvenirs on their heads with, 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 with cooking sticks on their hands. They put it other related issues. Mm-hmm. And they have not given it even better attention because actually they also don't have a formula to correct it, they are only pinning down William Ruto with it because it's a populist politics which they can play very quickly so that people can be very sad that things are very difficult. And so that's what they are doing. But now what they are dealing with, they are creating position of uh, opposition leader and they are also creating or uh, authenticating position of the chief uh, prime cabinet. And that one which is being created is not even the current one. This one is even simpler. The one they are going to create is going to be very complex because it's going to be a very serious independent office. Okay. Uh, and then the opposition leader. This is overall and generally going to increase the cost of living. Uh, uh, you you have to, actually mentioned yes. a very important point, the creation of, uh, you know, offices. Offices. And of course, one of them is the office of prime uh, cabinet. cabinet secretary. And, and of course, another, another, another creation was the office of the opposition, opposition leader, leader which, yes. which were, you know, actually it came from the government side. So when you talk about, uh, you know, uh, this being fronted by the Azmio, probably that on that one you are uh, you are out of order on I'm that one. But the position was order. actually it was a point of it, uh, you know Kenya Kwanza from side the side of Kenya Kwanza during the formation of this uh, you know the NADCO report and some of the issues that could be, uh, that were to be discussed on that particular area. Let me tell you, uh, these people meet privately. Mm-hmm. And when they meet privately, they don't tell you. Mm-hmm. Yes, these people knew very well what the opposition wanted, a position, mm-hmm. nothing mm-hmm. else. In fact, I listed for you the recommendations 
Right. If you look at NADCO report, yes, you have 520 page document, but if you look at even the schedules, uh, there are many. But if you look at recommendations, number one, restructuring of IBC, number two, mm -hmm. uh, delineation of boundaries, number three, uh, uh, review, I mean, uh, of, uh, audit mm -hmm. of uh, 2022 elections mm -hmm. is when the cost of living comes as Article 43 and others. What I can tell you is this position is what these people wanted. Mm -hmm. And when they are given positions very fast, they didn't refuse. Uh, Why did the they two, reject the two people? Because if, if, if they really wanted to reduce cost of living, and that's mm -hmm. why they called for that talk. Mm -hmm. Why didn't they reject? You know, sometimes uh, if you look at Solomon, mm -hmm. King Solomon in his Solomonic judgment, mm -hmm. when the two women came to him with a child, and one claimed the child belonged to her, another mm -hmm. one claimed the child belonged to her. The one who had the pain of giving birth to this one mm -hmm. said, if the child has to be divided into pieces, that will be a loss to all of us, and the child will die. So give it, give the child to her. All right. At least but she was sure now, the now. child will be safe. Now, I get if your point. the cost of living uh -huh. was a problem which as mere people created and they wanted it to be reduced, mm -hmm. if they really were clever, they should have known that the government is throwing to them a Solomonic opinion so that they can make a decision which they fail so they decided at the, at the end to of the day in the at the end, at the end of the day the at the end of the day yes it's fair to say politician in some way are you know very cunning because uh, each team came with their proposal kenya kwanza office of prime uh, prime minister then and of course uh, the op let, let, the office of of the opposition. Then as Mio, uh, among the key issues that they fronted was uh, the high cost of living, reconstitution of IEBC, opening of the server. Let, At the end let, of the day, my, my this is what we have. Let me tell you, my brother, politics is a mm -hmm. game of uh, wits. Mm -hmm. It's what we call battle of wits, mm -hmm. where are brains and counter brains. Okay. Yes, you. It is. It is in, like in diplomacy under negotiation. Mm -hmm. There is always a card which every negotiator must keep under the table. You see, William Ruto knows very well that these people want to position, and that's the hunger. That's the reason why they send people to the streets. They all do right. not send people to the streets so that people can be happy. After, after all, they may not want those people to be happy. Okay. If you improve their cost of living, like Kebra, right, is used to mass of poor people, like uh, the ones living in Kebra. So if you change the lives of those people in Kebra, who will go on street for him? Can okay. I go on street? So what I'm telling you <laughs> All right. is that William Ruto, mm -hmm. being a perfect and tactical politician, okay. just sent, because already he had created the position of prime cabinet secretary. He was already having it. And those are the reasons why the government, the, the opposition was complaining when he created that position and when he created the CAS positions. But now he throws it back to them, but with accompaniment so that they can buy it because they, he tells them i will need a position of prime cabinet secretary but then i'll also give you position of opposition leader so All right. he played to their he played them properly and okay. in fact this is one this one tells you how our opposition is hungry for power <laughs> and they are not tactical in tactical tactical in their thinking uh, fair enough and uh, now talking about the opposition now let's switch gears to you know the orange divide um last week ODM party leader Raila Odinga endorses two, uh, two of his deputies, former Kakamega governor, weekly for Paranya, and former Mombasa governor, uh, that is Ali Joho. And um, after the endorsement, there has been some sort of fraction. There is um, a team that, of course, supports Oparanya, the other team that supports uh, Joho. And of course, this is now, you know, it's, it's an early, an early fraction that you are witnessing. Well, should this go on? Uh, just, just Where do you foresee the future okay, of ODM? Uh, I'm, I'm going to delve properly in that, but just lay, allow me to put a final piece mm -hmm. in the NADCO thing. Uh, pretty yeah. quick. Uh, NADCO was actually intended not mm -hmm. to yield anything. Mm -hmm. It was intended to cause havoc and to let the government bow to the pressure of mm -hmm. opposition so that they could get something more of a replica of a handshake or maybe some consensus on how to work. But basically Kenyans are supposed to be aware that that thing was not to solve their problems because mm -hmm. their problems are properly being solved by William Ruto. Number mm -hmm. one, production of food mm -hmm. has in been increased by increasing agricultural land and fertilizer and input which is there. Number two, cost of uh, purchase of 
imported okay. goods. Just a minute. Okay. Cost of importation of imported goods has mm-hmm. reduced because the dollar has been reduced. All right. And the f- cost of Wunga itself has reduced. So generally, mm-hmm. William Ruto is dealing with the problem and he's solving the problem of housing and he's also doing universal health care, which right. is already working. And fair uh, enough, fair with the amendment of NHIF and the rest is going to ensure that Kenyans are well taken care of in terms fair of health Now, come to this issue uh-huh. of ODM. Uh, personally, I'm not uh, of the interest of mm-hmm. uh, delving much in ODM politics, but because they are our opponent, being UDA, mm-hmm. uh, we have to look at how they play their game. Number one, mm-hmm. Raila has always galvanized ODM politics around himself. In fact, another name of Raila Odinga is ODM. Another mm-hmm. name of ODM is Raila. Mm-hmm. So I can tell you for a fact, mm-hmm. before this station, mm-hmm. that without Raila Odinga, there's no ODM. Okay. Because it will be dead, just like Kanu, died with Moy mm-hmm. when Moy ceased to, to be in politics. All right. That's how Moy, it ended. So be sure that okay. ODM mm-hmm. is going to end. But mm-hmm. this divide in uh, ODM All right. is perfectly going to ensure mm-hmm. that it goes because Joho has mm-hmm. no capacity to mobilize anything okay. in okay. Uh, ODM. Just like uh, Oparanya can, govern, can mobilize nothing. Mm-hmm. And that's why if Raila goes to African Union, that will be the end of the journey of OD, ODM. And Thank you. The Thank you. Because we are running out of time, I want to, you know, I wish we had, you know, plenty of time to go through all these, um, you know, very important topics. But uh, time is not on our side. And as uh, they say, time is not our friend. I'm afraid that's where we'll have to leave it for today. And uh, thank you so much for making time. Uh, Kennedy Ondiek, UDA, you know, Nyanza coordinator and governance expert. Asante sana for your time. Thank you, so.